my name is Sumna Rosmick, and this is the channel here on YouTube where I do what I call mini readings. Usually my work, sometimes other people's work, and here lately I've been doing a lot of other people's work because I'm trying to get a whole plethora of videos on the channel that's poetry from all over the world. Uh, bear with me, this is the sixth time I've tried to record this because I keep having, uh, my phone is old and it keeps giving me problems, um, storage problems today. We're going to do something special. Gabriel Rosenstock gave me permission to read this poetry from his book, Stillness of Crows. Uh, he is an Irish language poet, but he writes also his own translations into English. And he does haiku. This is a really good exercise for me because I'm one of those people that are always straining for the future. And I know there will come a future that I'm not in because we all die, but it doesn't matter to me. It's like, let's go, let's go, let's go. And that is reflected in the way that I read, too. I'm not one of those people that does the poetry speak, or at least I try not to. And by that, I mean, you know, the style of reading that you've heard people do where, uh, which is true to fact, line breaks are usually meant to be pauses, things like that, you know, where they'll just like, ah, da 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 And it's not really the way we speak or think at all. Um... Well, it might be the way they think. I don't know, but... Uh, or that sing-songy way that the romantic poets, Yeats and all that, used to read. I like to read, or try to read, in a way that is conversational. Because when I read poems, it's how I read them. Blah, blah, blah. Blah, blah. Because that's how we think, and that's how we talk, right? In a big rush, usually. Big rush of words. Uh, not that I'm, I'm rushy in my everyday life, because... My body is really, really slow. I try not to ever be in a hurry when I go out. But when it comes to the way my mind works, it's very fast. So this will be a good exercise for me because haiku is all about slowing down and enjoying one moment. Snapshot. And so I'm going to try to reflect that in the way I read. Uh, also, apparently it's traditional to read haiku twice. So I'm going to read each poem twice. In fact, I may read it more than twice, depending on what strikes my fancy, what helps me to slow my own mind down. Um, Gabriel Rosenstock has a whole series of videos out on YouTube. You can just like Google his name and there they'll be, about the history of haiku and how to read it. Um, there's like a little mini master class out there, three videos that are five or six minutes long. And it's really interesting to watch him because he is very much like his poetry. You know, when you watch him talk, watch him interact with people around him, with the environment around him, and watch him read, it's like looking at a river in the dead middle of summer when there hasn't been rain for a while. You know, the water is really still. There is there's still a current, but it's it's just, you can just barely see it. It's very still and very calm and it's still moving forward but it's you know he's like that so I can learn a lot from him um, I'm going to read three of his haiku from this book I saved my spots and it's important too with haiku for you to see it on the page and see the image that goes with it there's usually like a painting or something uh, at first I thought, well, he just does ekphrastic haiku, but the more I learned about haiku itself, the more I realized that that's how it's done. You know, there's this whole tradition with haiku that's similar to how the sonnet in English has a whole tradition behind it. And even whenever you read a poem, a sonnet in English that doesn't follow that tradition, you're still reading it through the lens of that tradition, so that affects how you interpret it. Um, even if it's very an avant-garde kind of sonnet, it still affects how you interpret it because that whole tradition, well, haiku is the same way. Uh, uh, in recent years, uh, it's become much more serious than it used to be. Uh, it can be funny, it can be serious, whatever, but it's just one moment, like a, like a photograph, only it's the moment as you saw it in your mind. See, my voice lowered. I'm trying to calm myself and slow myself into that vibe. <laughs> okay.
Okay, so here's the image that goes with it. And I think my camera does the mirror thing. And I don't know how not to do that. But you'll still get an idea. And you'll see the Irish and the English there. And there's the image. And I'm not going to read the Irish. I do know a little bit of Irish. A little bit. I tried to teach myself about 10 years ago. Um, but I don't trust myself well enough to pronounce it correctly in a public forum like this. I don't want to uh, offend any of my uh, Irish-speaking people that may be watching. So I'm just going to read the English. Uh, Gabriel said that would be okay. <laughs> I guess he doesn't want me to butcher it either. That's another reason why I love watching his videos, though, because uh, his videos about high school and stuff, because uh, he speaks in the Irish and it has the English subtitles underneath. And it, it's just a lovely language. I love the sound of it. I like the way it looks on a page. I guess that's a poet thing. We love languages and we love languages easy, even if uh, we're not real familiar with them. You know, it's just... It represents a whole different worldview and a whole different taste in the mouth. With me, words have a taste. Uh, you know, a whole different sound, whole different music, and it's just, uh, it fascinates me. It fasc he does this, he did this whole series of uh, haiku about Gandhi, and it had the Irish on the page and the English on the page, and I think it was Hindi underneath. It was definitely one of the Indian languages. I think it was Hindi. I, were, I loved that. But okay, here's the, ugh, see, my mind is racing again. Slow it down, Mimi. This is uh, the image for this haiku. This is what it says. Thousands of unwritten haiku, bats in moonlight. Thousands of unwritten haiku, bats in moonlight. Just picture that in your head, right? All those bats. This one, <coughs> excuse me, it's been a rough morning. Like I said, sixth time trying to record this. This one, uh, fascinates me. Here's the, the photograph that goes with it. Let you see it on the page. Okay. Plum tree flowering in the eye of a bullfinch. Plum tree flowering in the eye of a bullfinch. Isn't that beautiful thought. Look into the eye of a tiny bird and see a flowering tree. Or look through the eye of a tiny bird at the flowering tree. Okay. Now this one I, I really liked. Uh, we have a lot of birds where I live. The river that I live by is a bird sanctuary. We're right close to the Brakes Interstate Park, which is called the Grand Canyon of the South. If you're ever in the U.S., come down. You, you won't regret it. Uh, World-class whitewater rafting. They released the dam in October. Really exciting stuff. In fact, October is our busy season because of that. So we have a lot of birds, a lot of cranes, a lot of herons, different things like that. Uh, so we I see them a lot. Um, also, it recently snowed, it didn't lay. We've had an extremely mild winter, which normally I don't complain about because I don't like the cold, but we've had several mild winters in a row and we really need some, some, a bug killing winter because summers are a bit ridiculous with the bug smell. But anyway, it was snowing the other day and it, it didn't lay, but it made me think just watching it come out of the sky and act like it was gonna lay, made me think of this poem which I guess is one of the reasons why I wanted to read it today. Here's the image. I hope you can see these real well. I work with what I got. I do this at home. I have a phone camera. <laughs> I'm not professional by any means with my equipment. I do the best I can. Um, 
Anyway, there's the image. And here's how it goes. White herons not born yet. Whirling snow. White herons not born yet. Whirling snow. It's actually a beautiful idea of an art form. I can definitely learn a lot from it. I've not attempted to write a lot of haiku myself because it's a bit alien to the way my mind works, but that's all the more reason to do it, right? Train myself to slow down. <laughs> um, I don't know why I'm like that. I don't know if it's because my body moves so slow, so my mind tries to keep ahead of it, you know, gets bored and whatever, but... Um, a good exercise every once in a while slow down catch one one of a moment literally of a moment and just be like there it was look at it from all angles I love that idea um, also if you happen to be in Ireland and you see a paper plane on the ground pick it up it might be a haiku just saying you'll see what I mean if you if you google Gabriel Rosenstock on YouTube. <clears throat> um, anyway, I hope you enjoyed this, and I hope you'll come back for more. Uh, go go back to the channel and see what you can find that you'd like, because, like I said, there's a lot there now. I think there's almost 100 videos now, um, going back to 2011. So you can see me get a little bit older. And... Um, but I'm sure there'll be something that you enjoy in that. And that's what this is all about. Just sharing the love. Sharing the love. <laughs> I hope you have a beautiful day. Thank you.